can anyone tell which all the topics we covered in the previous class yesterday's class Shahin Kausar Yes ma'am Which topics we covered in the previous class? Constant coordinate system differential of area volume Yes, yes. In the previous class, we just uh, observed how to get a surface of any of the Cartesian, cylindrical, or as our spherical systems just by making one of the coordinate as a constant and varying the other two coordinate systems. Then I am able to get what is that surface so that I can find out whether what might be the volume equation and what might be the our uh, displacement equation and also about our normal surface, differential normal surface equations, how we are going to get. Those two topics are interrelated and also we come across for the Cartesian, what are the equation and also for the cylindrical and also for the spherical coordinate system about our displacement, then about our normal surface area, then about our what is the volume. These all things we learned in the previous class. Next, we'll shift on to the next topics about our uh, different terms uh, which are not going to be now normally we will be going to use in a mathematics uh, different words uh, almost in uh, mathematics we will be using of the same word but in our electromagnetic field we are getting naming in a different way okay next topic is of del operator this del operator is important this question it is asked in the examination for four marks four to five marks what is this del operator is going for in the normal mathematics way we will be telling the name as differentiation differentiation of any of the with respect to the some variable with one variable with the another variable here also in our electromagnetic fields we are going to use the differentiation but the name here we are going to give as a del operator del operator is nothing but a vector in a differential operation here for the del operator will be uh, using a symbol that is reverse of your triangular shape. This is our del operation. Anywhere in the textbook or any, somewhere you will be going to use of uh, this symbol means we are going to use of our del operation for that system. In the Cartesian coordinate system, the del operation is going to be represented as our del is going to be equals to do divided by do x of unit vector a x plus do by do y of unit vector a y plus do by do z of unit vector a z. This differential operation or operator is otherwise known as one more name here it is given as gradient operator. I can use of the del operator or else by using a gradient operator is not a vector by itself. It's not a vector in, in a particular direction it will not show by itself it's not going to be giving it depends on the unit vector means it depends on the which parameter you're going to be using for that reason then but when it is operates on the scalar function it depends on the scalar operation in which way you're going to be using a small example here it is given a vector n choose the operation is useful in defining of the gradient of a scalar. Observe here, the gradient of a scalar is taken as V dot 
del of v in like this we are going to be representing scalar v this is a scalar v this is our del of v then divergence of a vector a is going to be represented as del dot of a vector a then curl of a vector it, it can be represented as del with the cross you should observe here gradient of a scalar is going to be del with v then divergence of a vector is del dot these are very important whether you have to make, make as a dot or else a cross if you are going writing as a del dot vector a then it is of a divergence then if i am going to represent as a curl of a vector then del cross of vector a then the next one is the laplacian of a scalar it go it's going a scalar v is going to be represented as del square of v means it depends on which factor you are going to be representing whether you are going to be directly multiplying or else a dot product or else a cross product based on that it is depending that's what the name for the del operator then a del operator here what we take on the equation it is for the cartesian coordinate system next in terms of a cylindrical coordinate system it's going to be represented as del is going to be equals to observe here unit vector a rho do divided by do rho plus unit vector a pi into 1 by rho multiplied with the del operator that is differential do divided by do pi plus then unit vector az with do by do z this is in terms of a cylindrical coordinate system when if i go with the spherical coordinate system i can represent it as it's going to be equals to uh, in spherical coordinate system which are the varying factors that is r theta and pi these are things where it is varying here it's going to be represented as unit vector ar do divided by do r plus unit vector a theta 1 divided by r do divided by do theta then plus unit vector a pi into 1 by r into sin theta do by do pi this is how we are going to representing the del operator in a three coordinating systems next we will go with the reading of based on del del what all the other parameter it is related for the del operation the first one is of gradient and the divergence and then we will be learning of a how a curl is going to be taken now we will start defining what is what is the meaning of a gradient of a scalar the gradient of a scalar field here it is represented as a v capital v is a vector that represents it is having both magnitude and also the direction of the maximum space rate of increase increase of the v means it is having both magnitude and direction but for the how much it is going to be occupying the space on a material means a point charge i am going to fixing somewhere in a space or as in your any cylindrical copper cylindrical or some of the materials iron core anything you can assume there if i want to make uh, some of the properties of any point charge how it is moving okay one point charge is moving in all the way means whether your positive charge it may be or it may be your negative charge it may go any way when your supply is giving it uh, going in one direction that's it till that it will be uh, moving in a random randomly what is this charge is going to be it is taking what is the maximum space it can occupy in the material on the material that uh, it is having the it should have the magnitude and also the direction that form will be telling as gradient of a scalar here a small figure it is given observe here 
our point here it is a uh, from p1 and here two points are there p1 and p2 here a small angle theta this is what we are telling as a gradient that is represented as g in terms of a vector and the difference what it is going to be that is of your del of v then here this is volume v1 then this this part what uh, the figure is showing this one is of v2 and the third layer is of v3 for one charge for another charge for another charge okay what is the difference is going to be that is going to be represented as del of v a mathematical expression for the gradient can be obtained by evaluating the difference in the field the difference in the field means that is taken as dv between of a two points for one volume i can represent a points as p1 for other volume as taken as a p2 what might be the difference in these two that difference is giving us what is our gradient between points p1 and p2 of the figure where v1 and v2 are count contours on which v is constant in all the three v is going to be a constant factor from the calculus we can write as differential volume i can represent as do v divided by do x into dx with respect to x then plus do v divided by D, um, do y into dy plus do v divided by do z into dz these are parameters we already learned in the maths of course uh, you are remember i hope so this i can represent here in terms of a displacement means we are taking two point charges where it is going to change from v1 to v2 based on that here observe here the equation this whole equation in terms of a unit vectors that is do v divided by do x with one particular direction then with the x y z therefore i can write as plus do v do, do v by do y unit vector a y plus do v by do z with the unit vector a z is multiplied it's in terms of a dot product dot the displacement that we already learned about our dl with a vector right the same equation here it is i can write dx ax plus dy ay plus dz az this it is in terms of a displacement this as usual just in terms of a particular direction we return the equation then for just for the convenience we are written here as uh, vector g is taken as this whole part here it is represented therefore what i can write when this whole function is in terms of your g then i can write the equation as dv d is equals to vector g dot this dot and this whole equation is of dl with the vector sign then what is our the uh, dot product equation we already come across a into b of cos theta here also we are write, writing the same thing here g, uh, g vector g dot vector dl i can write as g into cos theta into dl based on our dot product equation we are writing here then what is dv if i take dl this side i will be getting as dv by dl is going to be g into cos theta you will be getting off then where dl is the differential displacement we already know from point 1 to point 2 it is changing its position from one uh, volume with one to the two and with a theta angle between g and dl based on equation i can tell this then from the equation dv by dl is the maximum when i can get the maximum value for this it depends on the theta theta when it is of zero cos zero is one so we'll be getting the maximum value that's what here it is telling us dv by dl is maximum when 
theta is zero. That is, when dl is in the direction of g, means our displacement should be in the direction of a gradient only. Then I can get maximum of dv by dl. Therefore, dv by dl is going to be maximum when dv divided by d with n. dv divided by dn in which direction it is moving. It should be similar or else near to the gradient in which direction it is moving or else your angle should be nearly zero. That you have to keep in mind so that I can get maximum uh, gradient for our system. Where dv by dn is a normal derivative as usual what we are going to be differentiating of any of the uh, terms or factors how you will be getting of that. Thus g has its magnitude and also direction in those of the maximum rate of change of the v. What is the rate of change v is going to be changing that much the value of dv by dn is going to be changing or else our gradient is going to be changing. It, this all interdependent. By definition of a gradient that is g of v therefore I can write as here gradient equation is going to be you have to remember this equation g r a d gradient of v or else I can write as del of v it's nothing but the gradient of a vector uh, sorry scalar you have to remember scalar that is equals to dou v divided by dou x into a x unit vector a x plus dou v divided by dou y into unit vector a y plus dou v by dou z into unit vector a z. This is the gradient of the scalar in terms of a Cartesian then in, ter in term for uh, this equation is uh, in terms of a Cartesian then in terms of a cylindrical it's going to be del of v is going to be observe here it is same okay again here it is written the same equation then for a cylindrical coordinate system dou v by dou rho into a rho plus 1 by rho dou v divided by dou pi a pi then plus dou v divided by dou z a z this is in terms of a cylindrical coordinate system which system they are going given for us that system equation we have to apply when we are solving the problems then for spherical coordinate system it is of del of v is going to be dou v divided by dou r into a r plus 1 by r dou v divided by dou theta a theta plus 1 by r sin theta dou v by dou pi a pi. These are equations in terms of Cartesian, cylindrical and spherical coordinate systems. Then some of the formulas, it just uh, they will help when we are going to solve the problems. Del of e, V plus U is going to be Del of V plus Del of U. When Del of e, V into U is going to be observe here, V Del of U plus U Del of V you will be getting then del of u v divided by u I can write here as u u del of v minus v del of u same as the differentiation d by dx of a plus b what will be going to do? d by dx of x then plus d by dx of y you will be going for in the same way then d by dx of uh, a, B is there means what you will be doing? You will be keeping one as a constant, then other you will be differentiating others. Plus, uh, which one is keep as uh, constant? That again differentiating other factor is constant. In terms of uh, differentiation, division for uh, differentiation, you can go with the U del of V minus V del of U divided by denominator square. Same way what we will be applying differentiation in a normal fashion what will be going in the same way but to hear the symbol what we are going to use is our del operation that's it then del of v raised to n of course in the same differentiation operation we will be going for n v raised to n minus 1 del of v it is going to be u and v are in terms of a scalar and n is in an integer then about uh, some fundamental properties of gradient of a scalar 
of the field V is taken as the first one is the magnitude of del of V, magnitude of del of V equals to the maximum of rate of change in V. How much the change it's going to be with respect to V per unit distance. That much the magnitude is going to be changing. Then second in is of delta of V points in the direction. We come across with the magnitude, then with the direction, it is direction of the maximum rate of change with V. Means what? how much the V is changing? The, our volume is going to be changing. There is a scalar with, uh, field, it's going to be scalar field actually this. Scalar field is going to be changing that much the magnitude and that much the direction. In which way it's going to be varying and how much it's going to be varying. Both magnitude and direction is depends on that. Then the del V at any point is at any point if you are going to take any point is perpendicular to the constant of V surface that passes through that point. Means whichever, whichever the point we are going to be from P it's going to be any of the thing it's going to passing across P all are perpendicular to each other. That's what here it is telling. Delta V is at any point is perpendicular to a constant V surface that passes through that point. Then the projection are a component of delta V in the direction of a unit vector. In the direction of a unit vector, if I'm going to be representing, is taken as projection means in which direction it's going to be moving. Del of V dot A vector unit vector A and is called as directional derivative of V along A. What is this telling us? Directional derivative of V along A bar. We already solved the problems along which direction it is moving. And same thing here it is telling us. And this is the rate of change of V in the direction of A. Our unit vector will be telling in which direction our field is moving. Then for example, here it is given as dv by dl is the directional derivative of v along with the PV, p1 and p2. Means uh, our point is moving from p1 to p2. In the figure what it is already shown, it is going to be sh shifting from p1 to p2. That's what. Then the gradient of a scalar function v provides us both the direction in which the v changes. Our field is going to be changing most rapidly in which direction it is moving. That is one point. And another is the magnitude of the maximum directional derivative. Means what, my, uh, what is the magnitude it's going to be in which, and also in which direction it is moving of uh, scalar field that is V. For example, our gradient at P1, our gradient at P1, it's giving the information for us. And the fifth one is of if vector A is equals to del of V, then V is said to be a scalar potential of vector A. If I'm going to represent a vector A is equal to del of V, this means that V, it is a scalar potential of a vector A. This is what the meaning. These are five properties in terms of a magnitude, in terms of a direction, and what uh, what is the perpendicular information, then how the projection is going to be. And the last one is, if I'm going to represent the equation as A bar, uh, sorry, vector A is going to be del of V. These are five properties. These are about the gradient of a scalar. Then about a divergence of a vector. What is this divergence of a vector? In a uh, gradient of a vector, our one, two points are going to be changing. Means what might be the difference of those we'll be finding. But here in the divergence is here some of the points are moving towards our away from that point 
means our vector means our field is going to be whether it is uh, moving towards the point or else it is moving away from the point in which uh, converging or diverging at that particular point of our vector field. Observe here vector field I am telling magnetic field is there. Magnetic field means in, if I take the magnet what is its n and north and south poles if I am going to fix what is its field means how you tell you will be making of some lines and you are telling this is the field generated by this magnitude. Here also I what whenever I am telling the field means some of the magnetic field it is going to be uh, representing or reproducing from some of the materials. It may be of a iron or it may be of a magnet. It may be of any material based on that. How much the field field we can't see able to see the field if it is going to be generating. No, it is in the uh, in terms it is going to be changing what the uh, action it is going to uh, uh, representing means your motor will start running due, due to a magnetic field means it will start rotating by itself able to see the field. No, it's not going to be able to see the field means we are telling that there is a field for that field. What is the changes is going to be based on that these all factors will be coming across. We can't how the derivation come how where it is come. We can't determine those but the, what is the changes done? What are the work has been done by that field? Based on that this all the equations will be learning of those. Then we will go with the next one diver, uh, divergence of a vector. A, the divergence of vector A at a given point P is the outward flux. Observe here. This is we call as a flux only, right? Magnetic flux. Will be again we learned of the equations of what is flux, what is those all things. Here also learning the same one by one, one by one, one, but it is in a higher one, advanced way of uh, defining the equations. P outward the flux per unit volume. Per unit volume, how much is going to be? In terms of time, or else in terms of volume, how much it's going to be representing or reproducing of those. As the volume shrinks, shrinks means uh, compressing. It's uh, releasing and the reaching to the other end. So diverges, here it is converged with the magnetic field. Volume shrinking, shrinks about P. Then divergence of vector is going to be given as the equation we are representing as div of vector a that is going to be del dot of vector a that is going to be limit del of v is uh, varying towards zero here integration closed integration with s surface area of vector a dot d s with the vector divided by del of delta of here is delta of v this is del this is your delta where delta v is the volume enclosed by the closed surface yes in which p is going to be located in which way our point p is going to be locating that volume it's going to be representing then the, the, the divergence of a vector field a at the given point as a measure of how much the field is diverging means divergence will be giving the information about how much the divergence is uh, reproduced diverges are emanates from that point it's a divergence are combining going out uh, inside in, in which direction it's going to be moving here are some examples it's given the figure a this is a figure here is the point figure a shows the divergence of a vector field at a point p is positive observe here we are telling the divergence is of a positive why because the vector these are vectors the lines what it's going to be representing those are vectors diverges means it is moving away r is spreads out at p this is our positive value for the first figure divergence is a positive in the second figure all the vectors are moving towards the point 
Therefore, our divergence is called as a negative divergence. Here it is written, a vector field has negative divergence or convergence at point. 